Hey guys, so welcome back. This is a video about the power switch that's used on this radio right here. And this is a Philco from 1930. And this power switch is used in Philco's, it looks like to me, from the late 20s to early 30s. 1920s or early 1930s. Okay, it says it's made by a company called H&H. &H. And looking at some of the parts list on Philco, this one in particular, I believe it's a Philco part number 4095. I'm not positive of that, but if you are looking for that part number, this maybe will help you find it, okay? So this is a Philco Model 20. It's a Model 20 Deluxe that we've been working on. And we went through and did the troubleshooting on this radio to get it to work. We found out that this switch didn't work. So as we've been working on this radio, we've gotten to the point where we're looking at this switch and I'm going to have to repair it or replace it. So before I go to replace it, I want to see if maybe we can f repair this. So in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to open this switch up and take a look at how it works. With the idea of being seen, is this something that we can fix? So we don't have to replace it with a modern switch. It would be nice to keep it original, right? All right, so that's what we're going to do in this video. Uh, incidentally, this is a part of a larger series for this radio. In the first part, we we checked it out, made sure we understood how the transformer would look like it was going to be. The second part, we got the radio to actually start to work here on the bench with pieces laying everywhere but connected up. In the third part, we rebuilt the transformer. It had some wiring issues that needed to be addressed, so we took care of those. And so this is actually part four of this series, and we just got it isolated where we're just going to talk about the switch. We thought this would be really interesting for folks to see how these little switches work and whether or not we can fix it. So that's what we're going to do in this part. Let's get started. Okay, I'm going to take the opportunity to go in here and see if we can clean this switch contacts. They've probably been left in the open position, meaning off, for decades and decades, and there's probably been some oxidation on the tips. So uh, I'm going to go in there and see if I can open this thing up, get in and clean those things, and they may be able to work fine after that. So get that out. Okay, I have to unsolder this one connection that goes to the power cord. Actually, it would go to this one. This is where I defeated its function. Uh, earlier, but I'll get that disconnected. Okay, so here we are with the power switch out finally. And you see some of the markings on here. Three amp, two fifty. So this is made up of a stack of laminations of uh, or laminations of some phenolic. You see where the contacts go in. And you can see what I was talking about earlier in one of the earlier episodes. So these are the rivets that have been clenched. It's not here on this side. And if you look up here, you can see that that rivet didn't go all the way in, as this one did. Um, I, I, I suspect that it was probably just made that way. But I'm going to try to see if I can get those rivets out, and see if I can pull this stack apart, and then we can get in and see what's going on inside of the switch. Yeah, it doesn't look like they tried to clinch that end. Now this other one, I don't know, I'm going to need to uh, cut off the clinch bit somehow. I guess I'll use a drill or something like that to buzz that off.
Okay, it's flared a little bit too much to pass through this side of the plate, so I'm going to leave it in there for now. I can straighten that out maybe a little later. So I don't mess that hole up too much. Okay, can we get it out of here though? Okay, it's moving. See some of the, something in there to do with how it works. Let's see. Yeah, we're looking at the mechanism there. Okay, that'll hold the uh, the stack in the right order. But we can kind of open it up and see what we got here. To try to figure out how this thing works. Let me take a look at it and uh, come okay. back. Okay, I think I figured out how this works. First thing we can do is look at where the terminals come in. What they do is they line up with a track here and a track here. And get something sharper. So one of the things you might see is, and I've learned this by picking at it, this here is metal from about here up to into here. So that is part of the metal contact from here to here. Okay. This is not metal. This is phenolic. You can see how much dirt is in here. I don't know if that's dirt or some kind of paste or whatever, but I think that's part of our contact issue is this black stuff that's on here. I'm rubbing it off. It may be all the way up into here. Okay, so something makes the contact from here to here. So we got a dumbbell looking thing. And I think the dumbbell looking thing here is the contact that makes the contact from one side of the switch to the other. And as you can see, there's like a little partition in between the two that's raised up. And the dumbbell just goes right onto there. Okay, and it'll roll. And it'll roll like this. And when it gets up to here, it makes contact. And when it comes back over here, it's no longer touching these metal conductors here, and that's off. So that's the off position, and it gets rolled up into here for the on position. So what moves that little guy? Okay. So, and obviously you can see this needs cleaning as well, because that's what the contact goes through. All right, so in order for this to work back and forth, there's a, a little yoke looking piece, and it fits right in there, and it's spring-loaded. 
There's our snap acting part. Now, how it works is there's another plate on the end of the spring that looks like this. It's got two slots in it that line up with the little ears that you see there sticking up. So it goes on here like so. As I said, those little, those little ears will come up into that hole and through here. Careful not to launch this across the room, I'll never find it. So you can see it kind of kind of there. Alright, so you can see maybe in the middle of there there's a shiny dot. I believe what rides on that is what turns this whole mechanism and makes it go like this and like this. And that mechanism is in here. And there's a point looking thing in there that turns. So I think that is pushing on that little plate that has a little divot. And as you turn this, it rolls it one way, and you turn it this way, it rolls it the other way. And that's how the switch works. Now, can I reassemble this? I don't know. <laughs> but that's how it worked. Uh, we'll see what we can do with it. If we can get it back together again, it should work a long time because those contacts are nice and robust. I need to file off the rest of this little guy here and get that out of here. But uh, I'm going to get to cleaning it, and then we'll start trying to figure out how we can possibly put it back together again. I mean, it went together one, you know, once, and we'll do it again. Okay. Okay, so I got those contacts in there shined up some. See them in there. And I've uh, cleaned and polished up the little dumbbell. And what he's going to do is go in there and ride on that little track in there. Like that. And when he gets turned on, he gets rolled into this position right there. And that's where it makes contact, right there, from one side to the other. And then it turned off, it gets rolled away from it. And then the other thing I noticed is I was looking at the way the uh, these laminations are set up. You know, this one goes here like this, fine. And then this one comes over here like this, fine, that makes sense. Okay, but then there's an extra one here that was in this position. And if I hadn't had the wire on here, I'd probably be wondering if I did it wrong. It would have been on the inside, but no, it goes right there, I believe. And what that is, is that's the travel stops for the switch. Because if you go here, there's the pointed bit down there, but on this end, there's a little, you can see it, there's a little paddle. A little paddle right there and that travels in that travel stop and I bet one of the things we could do is maybe put this thing together in such a way okay that maybe what you do is you I don't know we have to look at this but I'm thinking if you look at the way this is it has an opening on this end so I'm wondering if maybe when you assemble this like this you have this piece off, out of the way, and then you can reach in there and assemble the pieces going to snap into place and then you shove this down inside to close it all off and then pin it. I'm going to see if maybe that's the way that works. Meanwhile, I'm going to keep making sure I've got this cleaned up as much as I can get it to get. 
a little bit further I want to go. But you can see where it's been contacting. It's made like a little bit of pitting there. Here, for example. And uh, we'll see if we can clean that up anymore, but I think it's probably okay now. And that spring will hold that down and give it uh, good contact, I'm sure. Okay, I'm just going to start filming this because if I get it, I'm going to get it once. So I've got a uh, punch pin put through there holding half of it together. I've got the one piece that's going to close this window off right here slide it in afterwards. I've got the control turned about halfway. I'm going to take the little barbell and drop it in place. Okay, now I'll try to get this where you can see it, but I need to see it too. Okay, so now I need to get this little guy. The yoke Get onto there. He's going to fit like that. And then somehow I've got to get this little plate on there and close this thing up. figure out how the best way to do that is. I don't know. I'm just going to make this up as I go. Let me put it in this position here. And of course what I'm worried about is the spring getting compressed and this little guy go flying. Got to be a better way to do this. Just have to be patient. Don't lose my mind. Get up and take a break if I have to, right? Okay. okay. Now if I go to close this, how does it want to behave? It wants to fall apart, it's what it wants to do. I'm doing this backwards.
So maybe, maybe that's the trick. To hold the spring compressed. I suppose it's, you know, people say it's always best to do this inside of a plastic bag, but I find I get dizzy after a while. Okay, so now that I've done it this way, how do I get it? I can't put, my, can't put that in there. But I like the idea, because I can put this in here, and bring the part in, and then I can slide that out, and it'll pop up against where it's supposed to go. How can I use that idea? That's the right way to think about it. I'm going to have to pause for a minute and give it some thought. Okay, so what I want to do is use this to restrain the spring. I want to reach this through like here before I put it together. So then I'm going to take the little yoke in the spring and the plate. It goes on top of this, like this. And what I want to do is compress this and put that needle through it while the needle also goes through this base here. If I can do that. Now if I had this thinner I can do that. Okay, hang on. Okay, so first thing I do is go and get this assembled. Okay, I'm getting my glasses on. Okay, I got that loaded on there. How did I do it? I put this in my mouth. <laughs> I assembled this and then I lowered, brought it into my onto my spike here. I'm sure if you want to build a stand or something, you can do it better than I did. Okay. So now, let's see, can I take this, it wants to go in like this, okay, so I'm going to bring it, like, pass this through here, okay, keep going, keep going, All right now, can I pivot this? I can look at this this is crazy man okay now I need to pull back the extra needle I don't need in there right now okay pull back a little bit more and I can even put the needle into the core of the knob okay like that so now I need to get this and the end piece together. And they'll get together right there. Okay, so now let me see how I'm going to do this. This needs to be at the bottom. I'll turn this around like that. Alright. Now, this needs to go on like this. Need the barbell. Okay. I can do it. I can do it. When you hear everybody say, come on, fix, you can do it. <laughs> okay. This needs to go on. There's the there's the travel stop, so it needs to go on this end here, because there's the paddle. Now the problem is, is that, okay, so I'll feed this through maybe. Are y'all shouting encouragement? 
Don't give up. Oh, darn. Okay, wait. This doesn't go in yet. That's my little inspection hatch. I get that open. Hold on. That was not supposed to be in there yet. Probably dropped everything. I put that one in only after I've got the rest of this put in. Why don't you guys tell me? Oh, this is the way to do it, though. That we figured out this is the way to do it. Okay. Don't yank that out. I almost did. Okay, so let's open this back up. Oh, looks like it was all where it needed to be. Okay, good. Come on. Get that out of the way. Okay. Let's put it all back together again. Everybody be patient. Okay, that's like that. Just like that. Dumbbell goes on there like that. Okay. Now the exception of that last plate. Oh, I'm close. This is the way to do it. I know I've got it. I need to have, I'm going to have to have some clamps to hold this steady. Hold on. Okay, I've got the switch body held with a C clamp. I've got another clamp holding my little skewer. Now, this is... part needs to go on. This is the part that I'm going to leave open. So I'm going to pull the, the skewer out. And so now I need to just take this and put it straight down on top of that. I'm going to go ahead and risk it like this. Okay, take this out. I'm going to try to just lower it straight down on. Can't go down all the way because that skewer's in the way. All right, so that's fine. I need to tip it up on one end or the other. Okay. So now what do I do? <laughs> I'm gonna try to get this. There we go. All right. Are we getting close? So now I'm gonna take this loose Get that out of the way so take a peek Okay, so I'm trying to get this uh, power switch put back together again, and I've been filming uh, all my attempts, and this is by no means the first attempt I've tried to do this. Uh, but once I get it, I don't want to take it apart again to try to show you how to do it. So <laughs> this is kind of like a one-take a one take thing taken several times, and uh, I may include some snippets of earlier attempts here just to show it. Various permutations I've taken, trying to figure out how to put this thing together best. I think I've arrived at the right approach here. One of the things I found is is that these uh, tubular rivets or semi-tubular rivets um, that were in here, I have not been able to source these locally uh, on the right size. Um, it's possible you could order these. I'll, I'll measure this and I'll just put right here what the diameter and length of these are. Um, I went to the local hardware store, the local Ace, and um, 
the the right size screw is a number one a number two won't fit a number one screw but the longest they had was a half inch which is about what that is and you need the next size you have room for a nut uh, and that would be three quarter and they didn't have that size so what I had to do is I had to go to uh, two millimeter 20 millimeters long uh, in order to have some screws for this all right so what I've done is I've gone ahead and pre-assembled the stack let me show you what I've done here the idea is to be able to assemble this and close this like this to finish the assembly so I've got the access way available uh, when I get it all in position not if but when <laughs> I'll be able to shut this shutter and that'll close off our access window here and that'll be hopefully that'll be it um, on this end here and it's already up in here is where the travel stop is you can see it in here and that is working as the I can see it but the little tab is in there and it's riding on the, the travel stop and you see the little arrow up here okay so that's in there like so and uh, I think the best way to do this is to have it to where the the rolling contact or the dumbbell I've been call, calling it um, I want to have it to where when I'm trying to assemble it this time I'm going to have it up against the the metal contacts in here just so I know that I've got a nice solid surface to push against uh, rather than the other side I don't know which side's better it may not make any difference um, see anything else I want to explain I think the best thing to do now is just to go for it uh, and just see what we can do and see what I can show if this thing goes together I'll test it and I'm not taking it apart again so <laughs> but you know they probably made how many how many of these radios they make I mean they made this model for two years 1930 1931 what do you think I mean a hundred thousand I, I don't have I don't know I looked on uh, uh, radio museum it didn't have an estimate but I mean you think about it they had to make a heck of a lot of these switches okay and these there's got to be a fast way to do this you just have to know what the trick is and that's what I've been trying to figure out and I think I'm pretty close to it we'll just see uh, but I'm not using any fancy fixtures all right so let's see if we can get on to the next step so the next step is we need to pre-assemble the parts so we've got the rolling contact okay you zoom you in a little bit we got the rolling switching contact piece. Okay, we've got the little yoke. Now, this yoke piece here is made of phenolic, and that's what keeps the switch handle here from being connected electrically to one of the power leads. Okay, because otherwise, that metal arrow is electrically connected to this shaft, but it is connected to this piece here and the phenolic insulates it from the rolling contact here so I think that's how it's insulated so that's going to go on there like so All right. now behind that we're going to have the spring which is going to help it with the snap acting uh, earlier attempts to do this I tried to do it with the arrow in the middle of the travel which doesn't make any sense really because if you think about it it wants to go snap to this side and then snap to this side so the middle is kind of the quasi stable position it wants to either go to this side or go to this side so that's why I'm working on it from one side all right and then this piece here is where the that little arrowhead points in and walk, walks this back and forth and it sits on top of the spring now it's got two slots in it that you can see there those two slots these two ears of this piece pass through that slot and it'll if I leave the spring out I can show you so they slip in through here like that and then that's compressing the spring and then what I'm going to do is I want to have a pin I'm going to put through here focus and that will hold this together with a spring compressed okay I need to get that set up so let me let me do that and you'll see it when I get it done
Okay, so it's all loaded. Like I say, this little dumbbell will end up being on here like so. And then the trick is to get that assembled inside of there and pull the pin out and have it all be in the right position. So we'll see how we do with that. Okay, so I found a way to get this piece in here to where I can manipulate it through this little window. So it won't fit this way. I've got to actually pass my tool through this side. If I can. A smaller diameter tool would have been nice. The little uh, travel stop here is kind of in the way. Let me get it. Let me get it out of the way. Okay, I'm going to need to get a smaller diameter tool, I guess. Okay, so I found a needle to use. Now, don't tell my wife, but I got this from her sewing setup, and if she sees this by any means, hey, look, I got one that was already bent. Okay. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to use this one instead, and it'll give me, I think that'll be more than enough. So let me do a little quick transfer here, if I can do this. We ready to try this? Let's give it a try. If it doesn't work, I'll try it again some other way. Okay, so all I need to do is feed this through here first. That. Oops. Okay, so got that in there. So now, that spring-loaded thing has really got me nervous. Let me uh, see if I engage that pin just a little bit further in. Okay, yeah, okay. All right, so now, I'm trying to do this where you can see. Keep having to look up at my monitor so you can see what I can see. So I'm going to bring this around. And it needs to be like that. Okay. Okay, so now. Need to put the uh, contact dumbbell in. It needs to go down on the little partition and up against the contacts. Okay, it's resting on the contacts down there. And now I need to bring this down and put the yoke. Come on. Close it up and position the yoke to go right down onto the part in between the two halves of the barbell as I'm doing this, right? Like that. I don't know if you can see this. I'm very close to having it the way it needs to be. What's my hold up? Yeah, this is a little tedious if you want to know. OK, 
Okay, I'm on the I'm, the yoke is on it now. Now what I need to do is close it where the the point that's in here ends up resting in the top of that cap piece above where the needle is. Or about where the needle is. Okay, I'm going to try to do this. I don't think I can make it to where for, for sure you can see it at the same time I'm seeing it. I've got the needle in between the, the cheeks of those two vertical plates. Now I want to see if I can just kind of get that into position. And one of the problems I have is I'm now up against these screws, these pins here, so I may have to go ahead and pull this out so that I can continue closing it down and causing them to come together. Yeah, I'm getting a little nervous. Okay, push that out. Okay. What's happening in here? I want the dumbbell against the contacts. I think it is. And I want the arrow in between the two halves, the two cheeks of the uh, two vertical pieces off the yoke. I think I'm pinching. Let me take a look to see. That looks right, as best I can tell, right? This is about as best as I can tell. Interesting how it goes up into one of those little lobes of the hole. Okay, I think the thing to do is now let's uh, we'll close this plate up just a little bit, just in case that gives that a little bit of guidance. Because I know that piece has got to be. able to go up. Okay. Moved a little bit. I don't know if that's good or not. Where it's supposed to be. I'm almost there. I think it's time to take a risk. Okay, let's see what happens. Twist this to help it slide out if I can. sure it's not too far towards me. I'm sure if you had to do a dozen of these an hour you'd be really fast at it. Okay, I don't know if I'm home yet or not. I'm going to go ahead and close this to maybe hold it in position. Get this piece to close. 
get the rest of it done. Guess we need to see if it'll move, huh? Oops, you can't see. Don't quite have this shut yet. But maybe if I operate it, we'll see. Or it may just fall off position, so we'll just have to see what happens here. It snapped. 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 You think it's working? I don't know. <laughs> Let's see if it's working. That means if I go into this position, I should have connection. Let's hook up. Let's get my power meter up here and see if we got something. Hey, hey. Excellent. Okay, now I gotta see if we can figure out how to get this thing shut here. One of the things I was thinking about is if you guys had one of these and you didn't want to risk taking it apart, I wonder if you could just open this shutter up, this one late leaf, and get in there, clean it some, and then be able to shut this back down without having to disassemble everything. I'm not sure. Not sure where this little shutter is hanging up, but we are almost there. We'll get that closed, but we got a working switch. This hung up right here on some kind of ridge or something. All right, so now I've got my little drift pin. Let me take this back apart and show you how I did that again. Forget it. <laughs> As for whether or not you could actually, um, you know, just raise that hatch and try to clean it inside there, uh, it might be worth a try. Just so you don't have to go through all this m motion I had to go through. But on the other hand, um, if you want to risk it, at least you know, I mean, this thing's going to work for a long time to come now. So, it was worth cleaning up. If my stubby fingers are able to deal with this number two millimeter screw and nut. There we go. I might put just a daub of enamel or something on that thread just so it's not going to come loose but there's not much reason for it to okay let me just go back and make sure everything's copacetic here and here test okay 
so and success okay so we got ourselves a 94 year old switch working H and H so it's a 3 amp 250 volt you think this underwriters laboratory inspected I guess made in USA H and H almost 100 years old and is I'd say it's pretty much good as new there you go cool as tight as that was clenched all right great okay we got this switch fixed that's good news so we can put this switch in and we can check it off our list got that done and the other items that we have are all basically taken care of so we'll put this in wire it into the circuit I've got some other things I've got to do with the wiring inside of here I've got to take care of the power cord coming in how we're going to do all of that and uh, also since we've now redone the transformer it's uh, ready to get mounted back and wired in to the circuitry and uh, now that it's all cleaned up I probably need to clean the chassis up a little bit and uh, we'll get into that in the next part uh, until then appreciate you guys watching and uh, appreciate it. thanks for all the kind comments and I'll see you next time thanks